I'm a clinician scientist who's been interested in immunology and the immunotherapy of cancer for many years. But my particular interest is in oncolytic viruses, which are anti-cancer viruses, which were initially developed as uh, agents to directly infect, replicate, lies and kill cancer cells. That's why they're called oncolytic, very much about direct killing. But what we found now over the last five years or so, and, and not only our group but many others around the world, is actually how these agents work is more by stimulating the immune system to attack the cancer rather than the virus directly killing the cancer cells itself. So in a sense, oncolytic viruses have now turned a really forming part of the world of immunotherapy, which is why we're talking at this conference, and I think are increasingly recognised as such. Exactly. So because cancers do many things to avoid immune recognition and destruction, uh, they escape from immune surveillance and uh, continue to grow. And of course, our immune system is extremely well evolved to recognize viruses. So if you can actually get a virus into the tumor, an immune system that was otherwise asleep will wake up and potentially attack. And that's how and why we feel these agents are really, and some people are calling them viral immunotherapy or even oncolytic immunotherapy. What has happened in the world of the viral therapy is one agent has now been licensed called Telimagine Leherperepfec which is a herpes virus encoding GMCSF owned by Amgen. Um, and that has sort of taken the field a significant step forward. There was a large randomized trial which showed some evidence of efficacy with that virus given by intratumoral injection into patients with advanced melanoma. However, the responses were not great. And as is always the way with oncology in general, people wanted to and looked to combine things. So there are now trials going on combining that particular virus, the uh, the Amgen virus with checkpoint inhibitor. But what we've been particularly interested in is looking at, if you like, a rationale behind combining checkpoint inhibition with virotherapy rather than just empirically putting two things together because two is better than one. And so what I'll talk about at the meeting and in my talk in particular is we focused on a different oncolytic virus called Riovirus. And we've now done some biological endpoint clinical trials where we've shown that intravenous delivery of that virus, which is a far more practical way of using the agent than direct intratumoral injection, can work in patients. So we've done two so-called window of opportunity studies where we've taken patients with cancer planned for surgery, given them intravenous virus before that operation, and been able to look in the tumour to see whether the virus was delivered, which it was, but also able to look in the tumour and the blood for signs of immune activation. And the particular focus of, of talking at this meeting is about our most recent trial in brain tumours, where once again we showed that we can give intravenous rheovirus to patients before surgery for brain tumours and showed that the virus does indeed gain access into the tumour. That was entirely uncertain and most of the trials that go on are direct intratumoral injection in brain tumours because the worry is either the virus will get neutralised in the blood or it wouldn't get across the blood-brain barrier, but we found in patients that indeed it does. And then following on from that in terms of getting to the question of checkpoint inhibitors, we were also able to show in the patients treated in this way that in particular there was upregulation of PDL1 within the tumours in patients treated with rheovirus relative to patients who weren't in the trial. So viruses, and we found this in other contexts as well, can upregulate these checkpoint molecules and that provides a rationale for combining virotherapy with checkpoint inhibitor therapy. So we took that data from the clinic back into mouse models again, and indeed have now shown in a couple of different systems, both within and without the brain, that combination of rheovirus therapy with anti-PD-1 therapy improves um, efficacy, at least in a murine model. And on the basis of that, we're now developing two further trials, going back and forth between the, the clinic and the laboratory, which is our particular focus of interest. One where we're adding rheovirus therapy to chemo radiation after surgery for high-grade glioma, and a second trial, which is earlier in development, will be to give rheovirus and anti-PD-1 therapy to patients with recurrent glioma. The short answer is no, and in fact, I think there is now enough, that the TVEC date, you know, has been given to hundreds of patients, and actually, there's a consistent theme, which I think is very important across virotherapy, that the side effect profile is really very minimal. People feel rather fluey and get high temperatures sometimes for a couple of days after treatment.
but it settles very quickly. And what that means is because the side effects are relatively few, it does open the opportunity uh, to combine with other agents, including checkpoint inhibitors. So the only um, reported data from one abstract of the early phase one data from TVEC plus ipilimumab has shown an encouraging response rate of nearly 50%. But most importantly, I think at this stage, a manageable toxicity profile. So I think one of the appeals of viral immunotherapy is that it can be combined with other agents, whether it be chemotherapy, radiotherapy or other immunotherapies. Yeah. Well, I think it's very exciting times in immunotherapy as a whole. There's no question. There was a concern, I think, a little while back. First, it wouldn't work, but then it would only work in melanoma. It's now quite clear that the checkpoint inhibitors work in a range of cancers. The world of viruses is still further behind, but for enthusiasts like myself, I think we hope that in five to ten years' time, the viruses may be where the checkpoint inhibitors are now. And I think the way they are most likely to progress and advance, as I mentioned, as single agents, they're not that impressive, although they have got a license. Um, but what is more impressive and hopeful, I think, is the combination strategies, particularly with checkpoint inhibitors. And we need more trials, both early and then late stage, to do that. But I think those are already underway, and I think it's going to move very quickly now.